Hey friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Andy McDonald and on this channel I share various aspects of Python combined with geoscience. Anyone who has worked with Python will know that there are a vast amount of open source libraries available out there that you can easily integrate into your project. In fact, at the last count in 2020, according to Google, there were over 137,000 Python libraries. And that figure has probably increased significantly as there are always new libraries being developed and added onto PyPy. So in today's video, we're going to look at six of my favorite Python libraries to get you started working with well log data or petaphysical data in Python. The first library that we're going to look at is one of my favorites, and that is Lasio. Lasio is a library that is designed to load and manipulate LAS files, as well as export them if you're creating it from a CSV file. Lasio was developed as a way to read and manipulate LAS files, so we can read the header data as well as the well log data that is contained within them. And if you're not familiar with LAS files, these are called log ASCII standard files, and they are essentially data with an additional header attached to the top. The header section contains information about the well, then we have the curve section which contains information about the curves, and we also have parameters if they have been exported into the last file, and these could include processing parameters or interpretation parameters. The LASIO library is a simple library to get started with when working with last files. And according to the PyPy stats website, we can see that it has been downloaded over 27,000 times in the past month. To load in a LAS file, you simply import the library, LASIO, and then you call upon LASIO.read, and then you pass in the directory or the path to the file into the brackets here, and then you run that, and then you've got your LAS file created as a LAS object. So once your LAS file has been loaded, you can start to explore the metadata, such as the header information, or we can start to explore the data itself. Another file format you may be familiar with if you've worked with well log data is DList files or Digital Log Interchange Standard Files. And these were developed by Slumberjay back in the 90s as a way to take more data into a file. These are not flat structures so they're organised into tables and into hierarchy. And as a result these files can be much harder to explore and view and understand the contents. So this is where the DLIS IO library comes in. The DLIS IO library was developed by Equinor as a way to read and view the contents of DLIS files. So as mentioned, the DLIS format is much harder to read than the last format. With last files, you can simply open them up in a text editor and view the contents. But with DLIS files, it's much harder to do that, and you need specialized software such as a DLIS browser, or you can use this DLIS IO library. The DLS IO library is developed and maintained by Equinor and is designed to allow users to easily interact with DLS files and extract its contents without the need for specialized software. The library is regularly maintained by Equinor and has 69 stars on GitHub. It may not be as popular as Lasio according to PyPy stats, but it's certainly a powerful library once you get familiar with how to use it. Working with DLS IO can appear to be a little bit more complicated compared to Lasio. First, we import the DLS IO library, followed by loading it in the file and by calling upon the load function. You can see here that we need to set up two variables on the left so that we can unpack the contents of the file. Once you understand the basic structure of DLS files, it can become relatively easy to access the required information and logging data as you can see here in the rest of the code. Another great Python library that you may have seen on my channel is the Welly library. And the Welly library has been designed by Agile Geoscience. And it is designed to make it easy to load and view data within last files and well files. The library allows you to explore the metadata contained within the last file headers. And you can view the contents of the data very simply by calling upon very easy to use commands. Additionally, the Welly library contains tools for managing data quality and identifying any problematic data uh, within your data set. If we have a look at the PyPy stats, we can see that from mid to late February, there was an increase in the number of downloads of the library, and the library is regularly maintained, as you can see here from the GitHub repo. Working with the Welly library is relatively simple, as you can see here in this notebook. First, we import the required modules from the Welly library, and then you pass in a last file to the from underscore last function. Once you do that, the data is loaded as a well object, and that object can be explored in order to view its well header information, as well as any well log data. There are many powerful features of the Welly module that include data quality reports and working with multiple wells. 
Next, we have one of my favourite libraries. It's very simple to use and can provide a wealth of information about your data. And it's the Missing No Library. Anyone who has worked with data or even well log data knows that data can go missing for a variety of reasons. And within well log measurements, that can occur due to borehole environmental conditions, tool sensor issues, tool failures, and many other different impacts. When working with any kind of data for any kind of machine learning project or petrophysical interpretation, we need to make sure that data is of good quality. To check for missing values, we can use libraries such as Pandas to get a basic insight into how many missing values are contained within each of the columns or curves within the data. But this is where the missing no library comes in. It is a great library to visualize that missing data and understand how complete your data set is. And it does so with four simple graphs, a bar chart, a matrix chart, a dendrogram, and a heat map. The library is very simple to use and all you need to do is load your data into pandas and pass that data over to the functions. Here we have a bar chart showing which columns have the most complete sets of data, with the taller bars representing more data and smaller bars representing columns that contain a smaller number of complete values. Now we move on to some of the popular libraries that are used within Python, and the first one is pandas. Anyone who has worked with data in Python will be well aware of the Pandas library. And the Pandas library allows you to load in data from multiple sources, from SQL to CSV to Excel files and a variety of different formats. And once you have that data loaded in, you can then go through and manipulate it and understand it and gain insights about your data very easily using this library. And as I mentioned, it is one of the most popular libraries out there with 77 million downloads in the past month. And Pandas is built on top of NumPy and allows easy handling of tabular type data, such as a data from Excel sheets. Using Pandas can be very simple as we can see here, where we have loaded in a CSV file containing well log data, and from that we can then start to explore the contents and the statistics of the data with a few key calls. So looking at data by numbers is one way to understand your data, but it helps if you can visualize that data through a variety of charts. And this is where the next library comes in, and it is Matplotlib. Matplotlib is probably one of the most common and most popular plotting libraries within the Python environment. It allows you to create a variety of charts including scatter graphs, histograms and bar charts. It may not be as fancy as some of the other plotting libraries such as Plotly or Seaborn, but it is a very powerful library to use. It may also appear daunting, especially when you get into the nitty gritty of using that library. But it is great for building fully customizable plots. As you can see on my channel, I've done a number of videos using Matplotlib to create a variety of well log plots and also scatter plots. You can see here from the stats that it has been downloaded over 6 million times in the past week and over 28 million times in the past month. Its popularity stems from being one of the oldest plotting libraries available for Python and it can be used to plot a wide variety of data. Once data has been loaded into a pandas data frame, we can simply call upon the type of plot we want, for example plt.scatter but we can easily enhance it by adding labels, setting axis limits, and changing plot styles. A number of libraries have used matplotlib as a base to build and develop their own libraries, and the most common example of that is the Seaborn library. With these libraries, you should be able to get a head start with working with well log data or petrophysical data in Python. If there are any other libraries that you use when working with well log data or petrophysical data, then be sure to leave a comment down below. If you've enjoyed this content, be sure to give it a thumbs up by clicking that like button. If you want to see more content from this channel, then be sure to click that subscribe button and ding that notification bell, and you will be notified of new videos uploaded to this channel. So thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.